Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Once again, this is Nidu Obed. Uh, we're, we're going into our message aspect of our Bible, our worship service today. And uh, before we get into that, I want to uh, remind us again that we can visit www.lovedivinechurch.org and see other things that we do. Praise the Lord. See other messages and then uh, know more about us that's how you do it praise the lord or you can also through facebook that you're probably watching us from you can also know about us from there hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord so father we thank you once again for this privilege the privilege is that you allow us to come before you to worship you the almighty god allowing us into his presence we don't take this for granted this is why we come in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today to give thanks to you, to praise and adore you for all your blessings and all your protection and all the divine favors that you placed on us. Lord, we pray today, even as we have come, let your word minister to us, speak to us and speak through us. Let your word accomplish your purpose in our lives, in the life of everyone who participates today in Jesus mighty and glorious name we pray amen amen, amen. amen. hallelujah hallelujah so I want us to get into the word for today uh, I want to start with a question and that question is are you in a relationship with someone right now are you in a relationship with someone right now? Are you in a business relationship right now? Or are you in a, a romantic relationship, marital relationship? Or, or are you planning to get into a relationship? Those are the questions that we are asking today. We know that as humans, we are always either in a relationship or we are going into a relationship. So. This relationship, this message today is to help us, to help us make the best of our relationships, to help us make the best of our relationships as children of the living God. So the title of this message is Choose Your Kingdom and Stay There. Choose Your Kingdom and Stay There. Choose Your Kingdom and Stay There. Think about that title choose your kingdom and stay there why because it is impossible to live in two kingdoms yeah many have tried and failed many continue to try and fail many don't even realize that they are trying to live in two kingdoms and they no wonder things are being uh, messed up the way they are right now the thing is that you cannot live in two kingdoms you either uh, abuse one or you you confuse both you it's impossible to live in the two kingdoms what kingdoms am i talking about i'm talking about the kingdom of the world and the kingdom of god so the world is a kingdom on its own and the kingdom of god is also another kingdom on its own it's important that we understand both if we uh want to uh, make our relationships what God wants them to be. If we want to take advantage of the blessings of God to improve and best our relationships, then we need to understand what the scripture talks about when it talks about the two kingdoms that we are we find ourselves in. The Lord will say to believers, he said, you are not of the world even though you are in the world. It's, it's not saying Ah uh, yes, because even though you are in the child of God, you can still live like the people in the world because you are in the world. That's not what the Lord is saying in that scripture. What he's trying to say to us is that, yes, we may be in a physical world, but we need to understand that we are not of the world any longer. In other words, there is a different principle that governs us, the people of God. And if we begin to understand this principle and begin to work on these principles, then some of the things that we find that we are struggling with, we will no longer struggle with them because we are now operating a new 
uh, 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 new principles. So, again, I say it's impossible to live in the two kingdoms. We shouldn't expect other people that we are in relationship with to live in the two kingdoms either. This is important. This will also help us to choose the people we are in relationship with. And if we find ourselves in a relationship with people, we know what to expect from them. You don't just say, oh, you know, this person should be doing this because, you know, this is right or this is wrong. Right or wrong, it's only one right. We know that. But from the one who is acting out, right depends on where they are coming from. We know that the right of God is the ultimate right, but the right of the person, the individual, depends on where they are coming from. So again, I say that many lives are screwed up today because of this issue. Whether they are in the world or they are in the kingdom of God, many lives are screwed up because of this idea of trying to live in two kingdoms. And we're going to look through the word of God today to see how the Lord tried to teach us to stay away from falling into this trap of trying to live in the two kingdoms. Maybe you already have a relationship that is struggling because there is a war going on in that relationship because the two kingdoms are operating. Uh, if you know what I'm trying to say, maybe one person is not all sold into the kingdom of God. So they bring their worldly ways into the the relationship and it's creating all manner of problems. Maybe it's a business relationship. Before you entangle yourself in business partnership with somebody, you have to be aware that the way the world of does business is not the way the kingdom of God does business. So now you know what you're getting into. You don't turn around and say, oh, this person deceived me. I trusted him or I trusted her. But it turns out that they were not uh, uh, honest. Before you put that accusation on somebody, first make sure that they, you both are operating in the same kingdom. We're going to look at what the Lord said about this subject to help us learn how to live in or how to benefit ourselves in the word of God, how to enjoy the benefits that the Lord has prepared for us as his people. And we're going to look at it from a parable from the scriptures. We read the scripture in Luke 16 today, Luke 16, Luke chapter 16 today, and this parable was a parable that talked about uh, a rich man and his steward. A rich man and his steward. We're going to see that from this story that the Lord gave us, we can see that it is impossible to live in both kingdoms at the same time. This parable is popularly known as the unjust steward. The unjust steward. The Bible said that that uh, accusation came to the rich man who had a steward and the steward had many servants or the, the, man, the rich man had many servants. So they came to the rich man and told him that one of his stewards was not living or was mismanaging his goods. Sound like something that will happen in the world, was mismanaging his goods. So the rich man was angry, so he came to the steward and said, I have heard what you are doing, and based on the report that I have received about your mismanagement, I am going to stop you from being my steward going henceforth. In other words, I'm about to fire you right now, and nobody wants to get fired. So especially this steward, because obviously the steward said, what am I going to do? He said to himself, what am I going to do? I'm not one that wants to do heavy work. I don't do manual labor. So I can go working now, go and find a job to do. And uh, I don't beg. I don't know how to beg. So I can't even go begging for, you know, what, how to feed myself, take care of myself. So what am I going to do? He said, aha, uh -huh, I know what to do. I'm going to go to all the people who are in debt to my master. And I'm going to make a deal with them 
And for each one, I'm going to ask them, he asked one person, how much do you owe my Lord? He said, oh, a hundred uh, uh, measures of oil. He said, okay, convert that to 50, right quickly, 50 measures. In other words, I'm letting you get away with 50. I'm forgiving you 50. And then he went around, how much do you owe my Lord? He said, oh, 100 measures of wheat. He said, okay, 80, right, 80, right, 80. He went about doing that. What was he doing? Bible said he was making deal with these people. The Lord, our Lord Jesus said, learn from this man. Why? First, the, his master heard what he did. The Bible said his master commended him for being wise. For being wise and for being shrewd. His master commended, think about it for a minute. Here he went around making deal behind the back of his master. And when his master found that, his master said, this is a shrewd man. This is a shrewd businessman. And the Lord said, listen to what the ungodly or uh, unjust servant said or did. Think about that. They both kind of giving the servant some kind of points for what he did. Let us look at Luke chapter 16 verse 9. Luke chapter 16 verse 9. This is our Lord's response to what the servant did. He said, I say to you, make friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon that when you fail, they may re receive you into an everlasting home. So this master, this man went about making deals so that when he finally loses his job, he could find favor with the people that he made deal with. So the Lord was talking to the people, the disciples and the other the people who are around there, and he said to them, he said, say to you, make friends for yourself with unrighteous mammon that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. Make friends with unrighteous mammon. No, no, make friends with material things. Now, these are the some of the scriptures that when you run into such scriptures, you should stop and think for a minute. What is the Lord trying to say to us here? Is he trying to say to you and I that we should go about making deals even if these deals are not right? How can you be using somebody else's uh, somebody else's uh, 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 things and making deals that will favor you and disfavor the person who owns the stuff? Is the Lord encouraging such a thing? This is things that we have. This is another reason why when we and I look at scripture, let us just, don't just take a verse. And just stick with the verse alone. Let us look around that verse. See what is the Lord actually trying to say. What is that scripture actually trying to say to us? What are the circumstances surrounding that scripture? When you and I look at that, we will find out that the Lord was not encouraging the disciples, the good ones, to do this. Because I want us to look at verse 10 to 12. Verses 10 to 12. When he said, that is Luke chapter 16, verses 10 to 12. He said, He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is also is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you trust, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? In other words, it's almost like uh, the Lord was using the unjust steward to show the people the heart of the people in the world. They will do anything to take advantage of the environment or the situation they are in. Because from, from 10 going to 12, he now says, 
you know, if you're not, if, they, if, they, if you can't be trusted with somebody's uh, little things, why would anybody give you even more? If you can't be trusted with with simple material things, why would God give you spiritual things to handle? In other words, saying that this unjust steward should never be have been trusted with the things of his master, but because he is in the world, and because that is the world, the way the world operates. The master actually commended him for being shrewd. But in the kingdom of God, it is different. In the kingdom of God, it is not so. The, the reason why you will see that is if you continue to read, you find that his disciples later came to him and said, Why did you say this? Knowing that the Pharisees who love money are there listening. In other words, why did you kind of uh, speak against the way they operate? So the Lord was never encouraging them to be like the unjust steward. He was being sarcastic, so to speak, in verse 9. He was being sarcastic, trying to teach us. When we are in a relationship, we have to be careful which uh, principle are we operating in. We have to learn to make the choice to choose properly. Do you want godly results in your life? Then you need to choose the God's godly principles. It's really as simple as that. We must, we must learn to identify the difference between godly and ungodly principles. Some things may appear to be profitable for the moment, but if it's ungodly principles that leads to that profit, we should learn to resist using those and stick with what we know is right. We may feel like we have lost a little right now, but I, I can assure you that eventually you will prosper in the way that is the right type of prosperity, which is called having good success. You must learn to choose. Let your decision be governed by godly principles, must learn to recognize the worldly way so that we can stay away from such things. We must choose which guideline to follow. That's why I say choose your kingdom and stay there. Choose your kingdom and stay there. And I like to think about sometimes people masquerade pretend to be operating in the kingdom of God why they are in the kingdom of the world. I call that masquerading. What is the thing about masquerade? Masquerades tend to hide their true identity of what is inside. A masquerade hides the true identity of what is inside. So if you are trying to get into a relationship with a masquerade, if you try to get into a, or you're already in a relationship with a masquerade, you do not know what is fully on the inside. And that is dangerous. Because eventually it will reveal itself. This is why I said earlier, are you in business with an unbeliever? I'm not saying don't do business because that's, that means you can't even do business in the world at all. But know what you're getting into. Don't deceive yourself. When you are in partnership with an unbeliever, you have to watch and protect yourself the best you could. Because eventually, if the opportunity presents itself, they will take advantage of you. Are you in partnership with a spouse who is not a believer? The same principles apply. I don't know how you got into that, but you're already in it. Then you have to understand that you have to watch and pray seriously. You pray that the Lord will touch the heart of your spouse so that they can become a kingdom child. So you guys can be operating in the same kingdom because if one is on the, in the world and the other is in the kingdom of God, you're going to have all manner of problems. That relationship is not going to be different from the relationship in the world. The issues that they are dealing with in the world will be the same type of issue that you're dealing in your own life because 
They are all governed by different principles. This is one of the reasons why you have so much, you know, problem in the house of people of God and outside. In fact, some people in the house of God, they actually have even worse problems because they are now fighting two battles. So we need to be careful and understand that there is such thing as two kingdoms. Choose your kingdom and stay there. Whether it is in business or it is in personal relationships. Even in the family, you have to know which ones are in the kingdom of God and which ones are in the kingdom of the world. You do not relate to both the same way. If you think you should, you are setting yourself up for a big fall. And some of us who are hearing this, maybe we, we are not yet in this type of relationships yet, but this is a lesson. It is better to know before you get in than after you have gotten in. Because once you have gotten in, it is hard to get out. It is hard to fix the problem. Now, I want to talk about naivete because sometimes we are, we are naive when we get, become children of God. I remember as a young Christian, that's, or even a young minister, now when somebody comes and says, oh, praise the Lord, oh, in Jesus' name, oh, God is good, oh, God is this, oh, God is that, I just fell for it, because I think, oh, this is a child of God, this is my brother, this is my sister in the Lord, so I fall for it, and I think, oh, this person was operating with the principles of the kingdom of God. So you just open yourself to that person and more often than not, the true color will show up eventually. You become a victim to some of these false brothers and sisters. Some of these people who call themselves believers, but they are truly not believers. So it's important that you and I understand that we can no longer be naive. Many believers fall victim to the issue of this being naive. Choose your kingdom and stay there. Trust in the way of the kingdom of God and you will reap the benefit. It may not appear so at the moment. You may feel like you're depriving yourself some profits at the moment. But I tell you, when you are fully established in the kingdom of God, the blessings of God will begin to flow your way. The peace of God, as a part of understanding, will begin to flow your way. The simple nature of the child of God will begin to benefit you. Yes, this is why we are saying choose your kingdom and stay there. Trust. Yes, we don't go around walking around feeling that we can't trust anybody anymore. No, that's not what we are saying. We are saying trust but verify. Trust but verify. What does that mean? Don't allow yourself to be taken by other people. No what to expect and stand by what the word of God says. Do not compromise your belief for somebody else's. Do not compromise your belief because when you do, they will abuse it. They will abuse it. But if you refuse to compromise your belief, God will send the right type of people your way that will help build this awesome relationship that we are thinking about, that we are talking about. God will help you because now you will be attracting the right type of people. Yes, give people time to prove themselves to you before you get into any serious thing with them. Give people time because they will surely show you who they are. Yes, the Bible calls it the fruit. By their fruit, you shall know them. By their fruit, you shall know them. I want you to look at that scripture from Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20. The scripture says, Beware of false prophets who came to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. 
You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thumb brushes? Figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruits. But a bad tree bears bad fruits. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is not is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruit you shall know them. In other words, a tree is known by its fruit. A tree is known by its fruit. If you look at stand by a tree and a citrus and you look at it and it's all lemon fruit on that tree nobody can tell you that that's an orange tree a lemon tree can only produce lemon fruits and an or orange can only be produced by orange tree so the scripture is telling us today it's not just talking about prophets we are all prophets of one type or the other when you prophesy, when you speak, you are prophesying in a way. When you are showing yourself, you are prophesying in a way. So he said, let the person prophesy. Give them time to prophesy before you commit seriously. Look at their track record. Look at their prophecies. Look at what they have done in the past. Look at the things they've done before you commit yourself. Don't just look at what they say, look at what they have done, look at what they do. That is what we need. Check the fruits always. Watch for what they do, not what they say. Or you're going to find yourself from the kingdom of God connecting with the kingdom of the world in the wrong way. By their fruits, the word of God says, you shall know them by their fruits you shall know them so today we just want to again remind ourselves that the lord spoke to us from the book of luke chapter 16 telling us that it is impossible or is not advantageous for you and i it will not benefit you and i children of the kingdom to entangle ourselves in serious relationships with the world because when we do there is consequence there are consequences that comes with that again we're going to take a moment now we're going to begin to pray as we begin to round up we're going to ask the Lord the Spirit of the Lord to help us as we navigate this thing we call life, as you open our eyes to the things that the Lord wants us to do, to help us to live the life that the Lord wants us to live, that we may benefit from what the Lord has prepared for us. Again, we say that many relationships run into the trouble, into trouble for these reasons. Many people compromise their belief because they are looking for instant gratification. Because they are looking for material things. Because they are desiring to build a relationship regardless of the dangers that may come with those relationships. People are naive in relationships. The Lord is teaching us today, being a child of God doesn't mean that you have to be naive. Being a child of God does not automatically protect you from the pitfalls of bad relationships. Does not protect us 
from the dangers that come with making covenants with the ungodly does not protect us from the problem of living or the, te attempt, the temptation of living in the two kingdoms. If you want to avoid relationship pitfalls, if you want to avoid the type of attitude of the unjust mammon whom you can't trust with what the Lord has blessed you with, then you must choose your kingdom and stay there. You must decide in your own heart that you're going to live your life based on the kingdom principles and you're going to associate yourself with people who live their lives based on the kingdom principles. And when you find yourself in relationship with those who are not kingdom people, you know not to be naive when you're dealing with them. I want us to pray. Let us take an advice from the Lord now as we begin to pray. I want us first to begin to thank the Lord for this day that he has blessed us. This day that he has given to us, the Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. <clears throat> Just begin to thank the Lord for this day. Even if you uh, rose up this morning and not feeling 100%, the Lord is the only one that can make you 100%. Maybe you still have the bodies that you went to bed with last night. The Lord is with you. The presence of God is with you. Only He can resolve this problem to its perfection. So I want you to take a moment, take your eyes away from your problems and place your eyes on the Lord. Knowing that he who has brought you into this day and has allowed you to listen to this message today, there is a reason for that. He wants to get you to a place where your faith will arise, that you may trust in the Lord, the one who can take care of all your situations. Yes, with God, it's never over. With the Lord, it's never over. So I want you to give him thanks right now as we begin to get ready to just pour our hearts to him. In Jesus' name. The book of Matthew chapter 10, 16 says, Behold, I send you as a sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. The Lord is saying to us, yes, you know we are sheep. The sheep is a harmless entity, a harmless being. But he says, I know you will be in the world, and the world is full of prey, of predators, like wolves. He said, I know that you will be amongst them. I know there is no way to live in this world and, uh, and avoid them. I know some of them are in your extended families. I am aware of them. I see them. Some of them are in your workplace. Some of them are in your business transactions. I know this is the Lord. But I send you out as sheep anyhow. You must remain as sheep. You cannot take, take their nature. You cannot begin to act like they act. You are a sheep. Stay as a sheep. Stay gentle and stay harmless. But then he said to them, and he says to us today, 
Therefore be wise as serpents. Be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. In other words, wisdom has been granted you. The wisdom, such wisdom, some such craftiness that the wolves, even the wolf cannot get you. Yes, in your wisdom that the Lord has granted you, you must be as peaceful as doves, says the Lord. So what is this Lord saying to us today? He said, learn. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Learn the knowledge of the Lord. Wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom. Therefore, you know you're getting, get understanding. Yes. The Lord has placed even in the same world ways to protect his own. And those ways are through the word of the living God. Those ways are through the wisdom that we get from the word of God. Today the Lord has granted us the light that shines in darkness. Even though the darkness cannot comprehend it, we benefit from that light. Yes, I want us to pray right now. We're going to pray regarding our business relationships right now. I want you to take a moment now and begin to thank the Lord for all your businesses that you are involved in. This business may be private business that you are doing. It may be your place of work. You are a staff in a place of work. It's still a business. Yes. I want you to thank the Lord for those places right now. I want you to pray and ask God to protect you. Protect you in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to pray right now. Father, we thank you for granting us the ability to be in partnership with people. Some of them are in the world we know. We pray today, oh Father, for every partnership right now, whether in the form of a staff or in the form of an owner, Father, we commit our partnerships to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for your protection, O oh Lord. We pray that the ungodly will not have power over us in our partnership. We pray that the influence of the ungodly, the influence of the world, will not, O oh Lord, derail our blessings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray your protection, O oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, our business will prosper. Our business will prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every devourer and every locust that wants to come and eat up what God has placed in our hands, every worm that creeps, that wants to come and destroy what the Lord has sent our way to bless us. Oh, we cancel their plans in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We say, oh my Lord, my God, what the enemy meant for evil, transform and use for our benefit and our blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. I want us to pray for our marital relationship, personal relationships right now. Maybe you have a spouse, or maybe you are planning to have a spouse in the future. Maybe you are in a relationship right now. I want you to commit that relationship to the Lord. Commit that relationship, whether present or future. Pray that the Lord will take full control right now in your home and in your life. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every worldly way that is associated with your relationship right now, cast it down in Jesus' mighty name. Declare those things ineffective right now. Declare, declare them destroyed in the name of Jesus. Declare their power and their influence destroyed 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Commit your relationship to the kingdom way. Say today, Father, I desire, my heart desire is to live my life according to the kingdom principles. My heart desire is to approach my relationships according to kingdom principles. I pray that the one that is in my relationship or will be in my relationship will also aspire for kingdom principles. I reject, oh Lord, I reject and I, I, I do not agree, do not sign any covenant right now with any, any ungodly relationship uh, 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 system in Jesus' mighty name. Just commit it right now. Commit it, commit it in Jesus' name. Ask the Lord to bless you and your family. Bless you and your family right now. Yes, Father. Let your light shine upon us. Let your peace fill our homes, O Lord. Let your ways be our ways. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I want us to also Think about our family, friends, our friends, anyone that you're in relationship with right now, pray for them, that they too, they too will be attracted to the kingdom way. If they have not given their life to Jesus Christ, that they will do so today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Now, I want you to lift up your, your health to the Lord. Just commit your health to the Lord right now. Commit the health of your family to the Lord. Yes, we are still dealing with the pandemic. And the pandemic did not stop. COVID-19 did not stop the other diseases and sicknesses in the world. We want to commit our families right now. We want to commit ourselves to the protection of the Lord. He is our great physician. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal everyone in my home oh lord heal us of every manner of sickness and disease in the name of jesus do not allow those sicknesses and diseases to come in and take foothold in our home in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen finally lift up your family for your financial blessing right now I always like to go back to Jabez. Jabez looked and decided, you know what? I am going to pray to God. Yes, he just shouted, Oh God, enlarge my coast. And the Lord heard him. Pray for the blessed for your blessings. Pray that the Lord will bless you and your home. Pray that the Lord will bless you with material things and what material things cannot buy. That the Lord will favor you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that you will be a symbol of God's favor to your community right now, that the Lord will bless you and make you a blessing to those around you, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, bless me, O Lord. Bless me, that I may be a blessing to those around me, in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now I want us to quickly begin to pray for those who have not given their life to Jesus. If they will listen to us this far, I tell you it's because the Lord wants to make them his own. So I just want you to pray. If you are an born again child of God, then pray that the one who is listening right now, who is not a child of God, will give his life or her life to Jesus. Bible said, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But the wages of sin is dead. But Jesus came. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus came to forgive your sin, to forgive my sin, that I may benefit from the kingdom of God. And I may receive the blessing of the kingdom that you may receive the blessing of the kingdom. And that blessing starts with the forgiveness of your sin. After you've admitted that you're a sinner and you have repented and you've asked God to forgive you in the name of Jesus. Why the name of Jesus? The Bible says that no one can, can pay for the sin that we have. 
but God sent Jesus, his son, to come and pay for that sin. He paid for your sin. He paid for your sin and your salvation. But you need to claim it. You might have a, a claim ticket. If you don't claim it, that blessing still remains. It's not your benefit to you. How do you claim it? By simply repenting and asking God to forgive you in Jesus' name. Believing, as the scripture said, that he died for us. Three days later, God raised him from the dead. And anyone who calls him Lord, not that was anyone who submits his life to Jesus Christ, receives the benefit of salvation, the benefit of the same forgiveness, and the benefit of the kingdom of God, and the right to be called the child of God. That's all it takes. So all you have to do is say, Father, forgive me my sins. I admit that I'm a sinner. I repent of my sin today. I believe Jesus Christ came and died because of me. Three days later, you raised him from the dead. And I, for that, I yield my life to him. Because as the scripture says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. I desire to come to you through Jesus from today going forward. So thank you, Father, for accepting me into your kingdom. Thank you for forgiving my sin. Thank you, o Lord, that I'm now a child of God in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says if you pray that simple prayer, that you are now a child of God and you have the right to look to heaven for anything that you need. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Remember the title of our message today? And it is, choose your kingdom and stay there. Choose your kingdom and stay there. Praise the Lord. This is Nidu again from Everybody Love Divine Church. I say, remember Jesus loves you, so do we. Amen, amen. 